Event volume curves have actually been in Cubase in the SX lineage for a long time, but they've always been a bit rubbish. To the extent that I've never really used them because they've always been a bit rubbish, but that has changed with Cubase 14 because then now they've got all fancy with, with curves and editability, the kind of thing that they probably always should have had. Anyway, let's take a look. So here we are in Cubase, and we're going to take a look at the audio event volume curves, but there is a small change which uh, you may find positive or negative, but it's it's been made for reasons to do with this, and that is, you'll probably notice that the handle in the middle, which normally does the volume, is gone. So we've got our fade handles as normal, so we can fade in and out, but normally we have a handle here for adjusting volume. It's no longer there, it's now where this little triangle is, and if you click on that, you get a fader which pops up. By default, it's on zero dB, but you can see if you move down or up, we get that with this representation of the volume being shown, the effect of that on there. Uh, you may prefer this or not. It's taking me a bit of time to get used to it. I think I'm probably uh, generally okay with it, but occasionally I still reach for the handle at the top. So it's gonna take a while possibly for that to be something that I'm doing regularly without going, oh, oh no, it's down here now. But that's by the by, let's have a look at the audio event volume curve. So these are something which have been around in the sort of Cubase SX lineage for a long time, but they were always a bit limited. It was just something which wasn't that great. They've been improved now, and that's why we're here. So they are triggered in the same way as normal. So you click the draw tool, and we can see if we hover over this, in fact, if we hover over this with the pencil tool, but if you hover over this normally, you don't see the curve. But as soon as you've put the pencil tool on or you create a curve, then you will see the curve as we will see in a bit. And this white line is representing the curve, which is at zero dB. So if we click there, we go into editing mode. So now we can see we've got this yellow line. It's showing the volume effectively underneath there of this clip. And we can just click and create some points. So I'm just gonna click and then move these. So currently got snap turned on let's zoom in a bit and we can see it's snapping there to the grid etc if i turn snap off it will just behave as normal so this is pretty similar to before but now we have this bezier curve adjustment so you can see if you click the round handle between two square ones we can control that volume in a way you're probably used to seeing with uh, automation etc so this is pretty standard but quite nice the reason i use this i've not not used this much because this is a tool which it's never really been something i've used a lot but if you want to customize a fade without having a faff about it's much easier to do it by creating a point there creating a point let's say where you want to finish it and then you can easily and visually do that quite nicely and get your fade working in whatever way you want so that for me actually is probably the killer application is being able to apply these and then I can have automation later on. But there, there is more to it, of course. Editing. These edit in a pretty similar way to what you'd expect. So let's create another point there, another point there. If you want to get rid of a point, there's two ways you can do it. You can either highlight it or highlight multiples. So to highlight multiples, if you click and drag around points, this acts as a marquee tool. So you can see there it's selecting these two. I can hit backspace on my keyboard on the Mac, or if I've got them highlighted, I can use the Alt key to do them individually. So even if you've got multiple ones highlighted and you want to get rid of one, let's say you've got like a whole load and you just want to get rid of that one, if you hold the Option or Alt key, there you go, that will get rid of that. So that's uh, reasonably nice. Now you may have noticed some extra handles appear when I hover in this area. So I've just zoomed in a bit and this allows you to edit them in a way which is probably familiar to you if you use the controller editor. So you can kind of fade in or fade out, etc. So let's create a few more points so it becomes a bit clearer what's happening here. And let's just put a curve on that and a curve on that. And then with these selected, so again, I can use the mouse to select those. And then these handles appear here, which are to fade in and you see here what they call guard uh, points are created. So whenever you do this kind of edit, 
what happens before will remain unchanged because otherwise this would be like fading down, etc. So that makes some sense. We can have that again fade out. We can scale it relatively. And we can also, with this handle here, scale around the middle. So if you've gone too far or not far enough, you can alter that. And you can see the effect of it on the audio straight away. So this is a reasonably nice set of editing tools for this. I think you can get what you want done pretty quickly. And if you want to get rid of the guard markers, they're pretty easy. You can just select them and then that's going to smoothly work into that. If you ever get a glitchy one, I've, I've managed this a few times. And of course, now I'm not going to be able to manage it. But sometimes you get, ah, there we go. If we zoom in here, we will see we've got this kind of glitch where it goes up and then down. Steinberg says that this will be smoothed out. So if you get any of this craziness, it shouldn't matter. But they're, they're easily dealt with, to be honest. You can just highlight that, delete it. But I've happened that had that a few times where I've grabbed and then re-grabbed an area and adjusted it multiple times where I've got multiple things selected. So let's just try, see if we can, yeah, there we go. That kind of thing has happened again. So there's a sort of spurious thing where it's going down and then back up. Generally easily dealt with and should be fine. It's also possible to edit these with the range selection tool. Now, this is something that I haven't particularly got on with uh, a huge amount, but I know other people are quite keen on it. So if you select a range, so let's say we select this range here, it's possible to scale these. So we get this scaling here. So this is a little less flexible than the selection range that we saw when you select a range of um, or multiple points. It's It's not the same in terms of flexibility, but I know a lot of people really like the selection tool and using the combined uh, selection tool, etc. So it's it's horses for courses, but it still works as the range selection tool. So then we can just grab this and put it somewhere else, etc. That works in the normal manner, but you get this sort of bonus of being able to adjust the volume in that selected range as well, which isn't something I've particularly um, used, but there we go. Now, when you're done editing these, you can just click on another event, which I don't have, or you can just go back to the selection tool. Now, what you'll notice is when you hover over this, by default, the volume curve will be visible. So there we can see the hideous crimes that I've done against this piece of audio. You may not like that. It's, it's something that is sort of I'm not sure. I wish you could have it so it only came up when you selected it because I find when I'm moving around a, a large session with lots of things happening, I get these things flicking on and off all the time, which is a bit annoying. But you do want to know that they are there. Uh, but there isn't the option to just have it selected. The only thing you can do is you can turn it off. So under preferences, if we go to event display audio, then you can choose whether it's on mouse over or always. So you can have them always on, which is a bit less flickery but it's, uh, it's always on. So I guess that's one of those things where you will have to decide uh, which is best for you. It would be nice to have another option, but we, we don't have that at this point. Now, we also have a command here to remove the event volume curve. So if we click that, you can see that just does that, and that's just going between those two points. If that wasn't a range selection, so if I had the entire thing selected under audio, we can remove that all in one go. So if you've made a mess of it, it's it's really easy to get rid of that. And you can see now, even when I hover over it, etc., there is no curve attached to this. It's just the default. It's not going to come up. So if you're not using them, that's probably the best way to approach that. Now, one of the things I think is a little bit disappointing on this is that you can't copy and paste this data. Certainly, I haven't found a way to do it. So here we've got multiple events selected. If we look under the edit menu, you can see we can't copy so therefore we can't paste. So if you want to recreate this kind of thing on another part or in the same part later on, it doesn't appear that there's any way that you can do that at this point. And I've tried quite a few different things to try and persuade it to do that. So that to me is a bit of a disappointment. I guess you could do some weird thing with making another part and then replacing the audio in it, etc. But I don't think we should have to do that. It would be nice to be able to copy and paste this, particularly if you've done something wonderful maybe that's not a feature that everybody needs but i think it would be good to be able to do this between particularly between different parts but also within the same part should you need to do that 
So there you go, the revamp of the event volume curves that actually makes them usable with the caveat that it's led to a change which is a bit more Pro Tools-y and I'm, I'm still not over it. Maybe I'll be over it in a long time, but I'm not over it at the moment because they just change stuff. Anyway, ultimately, I think this is a big improvement and it's going to mean I'm actually going to use them, which is, is quite a big change because, let's say, I never used to use them because they were so janky before, whereas now they're nice and editable. They're going to do the job that they always should have done. And because of where they are in the signal chain, they're going to allow you to get around some problems which otherwise are, are much more difficult to do. No longer will you have to just cut things and, and change the volume of them anymore. You'll be able to do it with a nice curve rather than this sudden change which uh, I've certainly seen in people's sessions where when you solo a track you can hear that and it's it's quite difficult to deal with with the old system. Now, piece of cake. So ultimately, pretty good. Are they perfect? No, I certainly know there's a lot of people who just want them to work just like Pro Tools, but I'll be honest, it's been a long, long time since I've used Pro Tools regularly, if at all. So I can't really comment on that other than regurgitate what other people have said, where they say basically Pro Tools does this perfectly, why not just copy Pro Tools? I think you can go too far with that logic. Anyway, as ever, I hope you found this video useful. And if you have, please like, subscribe, comment, and watch all my videos. Watch all the other Cubase 14 videos on the channel and potentially watch all of my other videos on repeat for the next couple of months because you'd really be helping me out. I hope you found this video useful and we'll see you again soon-ish for more Music Tech Tuition.